This from Capitol Hill, the Iran deal goes through. Senator Barbara Mikulski out of Maryland says she will be the 34th supporter in the Senate. According to our Capitol Hill reporter and producer Chad Pergram, 67 votes needed to override a presidential veto, but Mikulski would be the 34th senator to back the deal and thus would vote to sustain the veto. That means the president wins and that means the Iran deal is a done deal. So this deal is not just the best choice among alternatives. This is the strongest non-proliferation agreement ever negotiated. And because this is such a strong deal, every nation in the world that has commented publicly, with the exception of the Israeli government, with the exception of the Israeli government, has expressed support. The United Nations Security Council has unanimously supported it. The majority of arms control and non-proliferation experts support it. Over 100 former ambassadors who served under Republican and Democratic presidents support it. Israel will never acquiesce to nuclear arms in the hands of a rogue regime that repeatedly promises to wipe us off the map. Against such a threat, Israel will have no choice but to defend itself. I want there to be no confusion on this point. Israel will not allow Iran to get nuclear weapons. If Israel is forced to stand alone, Israel will stand alone. Yet in standing alone, Israel will know that we will be defending many, many others. I've had to make a lot of tough calls as president. But whether or not this deal is good for American security is not one of those calls. It's not even close. National security correspondent Jennifer Griffin is at the Pentagon tonight with some alarming news about one of America's greatest enemies defying international travel sanctions. Good evening, Jennifer. Good evening, Brett. Fox News has learned the shadowy Iranian Quds Force commander, General Qasem Soleimani, recently visited Moscow to meet with senior Russian leaders despite an international travel ban. Western intelligence sources tell me Soleimani arrived on Friday, July 24th on Iran Air Flight 5130 and departed just three days before Secretary of State John Kerry testified about the Iran nuclear deal before the Senate Armed Services Committee. Under the United States' initiative, Qasem Soleimani will, Soleimani will never be relieved of any sanctions. In Moscow, General Soleimani met with President Vladimir Putin, we're told, and his defense minister. The news comes as a UN arms embargo against Iran is slated to be lifted in five years as part of the nuclear agreement. Soleimani wasted little time getting to Moscow after the deal was finalized. Soleimani is blamed for the deaths of 500 Americans in Iraq. He was first designated a terrorist by the the U.S. in 2005. He is absolutely responsible for killing many Americans. In fact, I would say the last two years I was there, the majority of our casualties came from his surrogates, not, not Sunni or Al-Qaeda. What this shows, Brett, is General Soleimani is increasingly being elevated and recognized as a key player on the world stage as Iranian influence in the region grows, despite assurances from Secretary Kerry and others that he will continue to face sanctions. Fox's alert this hour, President Obama now gains the 34 votes he needed to protect his deal in Congress on Iran. It may still be a hard sell for some in Iran, but here in the U.S., Democratic Senator Barbara Mikulski says she will support the Iranian nuclear agreement. To the White House now, front lawn, here's Kevin Cork with more. And Kevin, what can you tell us? Bill, really, this is an enormous victory for the White House, but as you know, we have talked about this for quite some time. They have felt confident for some time that they would simply have enough support, 34 votes in the Senate, to withstand a possible GOP veto override attempt. Now the real question becomes, 
can they get to 41 and create a filibuster, thus eliminating the need to even take it to the floor? Now, as you also pointed out, while the cell uh, obviously is working for some Democrats here in America, it's a much different situation in Iran. We have pictures of student hardliners there yesterday protesting the Iran nuclear deal, saying, among other things, uh, that America remains the great Satan and death to America. In fact, unveiling a plaque at the former U.S. Embassy saying they will never befriend the United States no matter the outcome of this Iran nuclear deal. But as you point out, it's going to happen one way or another because we now know that the president has achieved his 34 votes to withstand a GOP veto override. Big news for the White House. Now the question, of course, is can they get to 41, Bill? Wow. Kevin, thank you. From the North Lawn there, Kevin Cork. Presidential candidate, Florida Senator Marco Rubio with me now. He's on the campaign trail. And Senator, welcome back here to America's Newsroom. Now that they've got the Thank votes, you. the Iran deal looks like it's a done deal. Your reaction? Well, first of all, they don't have the votes to pass it. He has the votes to sustain a veto. Uh, the, and irrespective of where this ends up, I'm confident that the majority of the House and Senate are going to vote to reject this deal. But here's a broader point. This is not a treaty. There's nothing about this that's binding on the next administration. And if I'm the President of the United States, on, in my first day in office, we will lift the, what the president is doing. We will reimpose sanctions, and in fact, I will ask Congress to increase sanctions, and we will back it up with a credible threat of military force. So the votes to override a veto are not there. So in essence, right. this is a done deal, Senator. Well. It, it's a done deal for the next 18 months, but again, it's not a treaty. There's nothing legally binding about it. This is basically the president has decided to use the national security waiver of the current sanctions that are already on the books, and he's going to use that waiver to lift sanctions on Iran. When I'm president of the United States, we will reimpose those sanctions on day one, and then I will go to Congress, ask them to even increase those sanctions more, and I will back that up with a credible threat of military force. A simple message to the Ayatollah, if you try to build a weapon, we will destroy your program. You know, I think one of the sad things is that liberals always mistake a weak peace agreement for leading to peace, when in fact weak peace agreements more likely lead to war. I think a future president is going to be faced with a situation where Iran has violated this agreement, and then what do they do? And they're not left with many options that aren't violent. Look, I mean, the American people are against this. Look what's going on. The president is scraping together 34 votes. you got Barbara Mikulski, who's retiring, who faces no political consequences for this, to barely get this through the Senate because the American people don't want this. And they don't want it for some very, very important reasons. One is that there is self-verification by the Iranians. And so the whole... You know, he brought up uh, 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 Reagan, and Reagan's mantra was trust but verify. This is trust and let them verify. You're talking about uh, so the, so the soil samples that in part in the military said that they won't let the inspectors in. They apparently will get their own soil samples. But let me bring in Chris Coons. He uh, announced yesterday that he is supporting a Democratic senator from Delaware. It's like he's holding his nose. And it's like this guy's saying yes, but here's what he said. I'm here to discuss one of the greatest threats to America, to Israel, and to the global security, the nuclear weapons ambitions of Iran. Frankly, this is not the agreement I hoped for. I am troubled that the parties of this agreement, particularly Iran, have differing interpretations of key terms, and I remain deeply concerned about our ability to hold Iran to the terms of this agreement as we understand them. So even uh, 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 Chris, a senator who voted for this agreement has serious doubts, it seems, that it will even work. The nuclear deal with Iran all but certain now to become a reality as Democratic Senator Barbara Mikulski of Maryland today became the crucial 34th senator to back the deal. Senators Bob Casey of Pennsylvania and Chris Coons of Delaware voicing their support yesterday, just a week before the Senate prepares to formally debate a Republican resolution against the deal. All this means the White House now has the 34 votes needed to uphold an expected Obama veto of any disapproval resolution Republicans hope to pass. Meantime, the New York Times reports the head of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps announced plans to expand the reach of Iran's missiles and said on state TV, despite the nuclear deal, America is still the same great Satan. Chris Coons, Bob Casey, now Barbara Mikulski, um, everything that Iran does to foment terrorism in the world, to attack Israel, to attack America, is now their responsibility as well. And I hope they're ready to live with it. I hope they're ready to live with the conduct of people who are the largest state sponsor of terrorism in the world. 
I hope they're, they're ready to live with the conduct of people who say they want to wipe Israel off the map. I hope they're ready to live with the conduct of people who say what this guy just said, that we're the great Satan, um, and that they now are testing missiles, not to shoot at Israel, to shoot at us. Oh yeah, those ICBMs, they are, you know, they're within the same continent. They don't have to go very far to reach Israel. No, they but don't. The point of, of long-range missiles is to... Is to go over the ocean. Create a few potholes. Yes, right. And, 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 and I absolutely believe that what Iran is trying to do is to create a new Persian Empire. Create a new Persian Empire. What can the next president do, though, with this deal? The, pre the next president, what they're going to have to do is to teach Iran a lesson very early on here. They'll be cheating. They've been cheating all along. We know that. And now even under this deal, we have the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, the folks that that guy is in charge of. Mm -hmm. Are they the ones who are in charge of inspecting Iran's military sites to see if they're cheating? How great. Only Barack Obama can negotiate a deal like this. So why is he, why does he want this to pass? So when they're saying that we are, they're calling us the great Satan? Yeah. yeah, well, because he always believes he's the smartest guy in the room and that he gets it and nobody else does. But, but what's the, the benefit? What does he get out of this? Well, he believes it's his legacy. And guess what? I do too. I believe it's going to be his legacy too. And I believe that the American people are going to look back on this and say, this was the single worst thing this president's ever done. And every death that Iran causes is now on Barack Obama's head. What are these senators getting in return? Well, that's what I'd like to know. Yeah, I right. asked last week, Kennedy, you know, I'd like to chronicle, because we're going to pay for it ultimately, the things that he's paid them off with. And, and I cannot mm -hmm. believe that a lot of these folks would actually agree to this mm -hmm. without them getting something else from the president. Um, I'd like the president to chronicle for all of us what deals, backroom, secret deals he's yeah. made. Because listen, we know he made secret deals with Iran. We've heard them dribbling out, and he says he won't release them. They've been leaked to the press. Mm -hmm. What secret deals has he made with members of Congress? I know how votes? this works. I've seen House of Cards. Yeah, it's disgraceful. <laughs> it's All disgraceful. those names on the blackboard. Governor, very quickly, yep. just recently, Rouhani even came out and he said he, that, that he vowed, he vowed that Iran would violate the UN restrictions governing those ballistic missiles. After the deal was done, he said, well, we just basically tore it up. Yeah, well, this is the guy that the president's trusting. Because he doesn't have verification in this in this deal, you got to wait 24 days to inspect any site. I and mean, listen, I was U.S. attorney. It's like if I got a if, if I got a search warrant and I went to that to a house of someone who was violating the law and said, "I want to search your house for evidence of crime. I'll be back in 24 days." Mm. Now, do you think, Jared, do you think yeah. Jared has played a role in this deal? About she plays Valerie a role Jared? in everything. And How she, big? Well, who knows? Only the president and, and Mrs. Obama know for sure. But think about this. Um, even the stupidest criminal in New Jersey, and, and we pride ourselves on having really stupid criminals, <laughs> but even the stupidest criminal in New Jersey would know to get the evidence out of there in 24 days. And the problem is the Iranians are not stupid, and they're going to take advantage of us. They're going to violate this deal. Of course they, they already are. have. He's already pledged to have, um, and he's got his own military verifying whether or not they're complying with the deal. That's what a joke. self-verification. Too. I mean, they're just yeah. going to do a bang up job. Oh, listen, they were and, celebrating and, and, in the streets when this. Of deal. course, and no Americans are allowed to be inspectors. Yeah.